Hi, you're listening to the Terra Podcast with Dr. James. To contact Dr. James or support the podcast, send an email to writing.pj at gmail.com. And now, today's episode. Hello, it's me again. Welcome to this episode of another podcast. Um, tighten your seatbelt. I have noticed a struggle amongst my fellow believers on you know how to read their bibles and today we want to talk about basic approach to bible reading basic approach to bible reading these are things that if you do you would probably come up with a correct interpretation of what you are reading and so drum rolls let's get into it Okay, so basic approach to Bible reading. I'm going to take them one by one. Number one is join a community of disciples. This cannot be overemphasized. If you want to learn and understand the word of God, you can't do it in isolation. Join a community, have a community, a local church, a Bible study group, join a community. God is revealed in scriptures with a community. It is in his relationship with Israel as a nation that his revelation is known and seen. So he is revealed with a community, among a community, and through a community. And so for you to see precisely, you have to belong to a community, a local church. You need to belong to a community that is committed to understanding of the bible and reading of the bible it's not just you know a place where you, you go to have fun but to know the lord as he reveals himself in scriptures the reason for this is so that you will not interpret any scripture for any private interpretation permit me to say you don't look at scriptures with personal biases and personal lenses because where that will land you to is to create a god in your own image and in your own likeness but by the time you start reading in a community and then several experiences are coming together several interpretations are coming together you would likely see uh better away from just your silo of experience and silo of knowledge so it's important that you join a community of believers so that you will appreciate scriptures correctly if god is revealed in his word then your interpretation of the word will determine if you will know god or not and so when you read words through the lenses of your experiences and your biases and your preconceived notions you will create a god that is different from the god that is actually revealed in scriptures and we should be careful not to do this god is revealed with a community among a community and through a community and to continue to work in that revelation you should be in a community that cannot be overemphasized Number two, the word of God is first learned before it is studied. You need teachers. You need teachers in your local church and other teachers whose material or whose materials you can look at. Sound teachers, great teachers. So secondly, you need teachers. Number three, you need to read. Paul talks about reading. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 4. He said, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. The word there, knowledge, is sunesis, a putting together. So what does Paul need to put together? Now, the Bible is composed of 1,189 chapters. And out of these 1,189 chapters, it is made up of stories which make up a bulk of the Bible, about 45%, close to 50% of the Bible are stories. So, and then you have the poetry, which makes up about 33% of the Bible. And then the rest of the Bible is logical discourse, connections. 
theological discourse. So, in reading your Bible, as sincerely as you can, pay attention to the facts. So, when you read the stories, look for the facts. When you read the stories, look for the facts. Now, you may not have the cultural cultural context or the historical context, but as you read, pay attention to the facts. No matter how weird or puzzling the facts are, lay hold on them. You can now start asking questions later as to why these facts are this way. In doing that, you begin to have the historical context, the cultural context, and probably the religious worldview of the time. And so, when you are reading stories of the Bible, stay with the facts. Do not try to interpret yet. Stay with the facts. If they said something is red, it is red. If you said it is one mile, it is one mile. Just pay attention to the facts. Those facts may pop up later, may show up later. Because the Hebrew writing is in a circular format. It's, it's in circles. So, what you see here may show up in another place in a more developed way, but it will definitely show up again. It's like reading a novel. When you read a novel, you don't try to induct or deduce. You just follow the story to know where the author is leading you. And the author of the Bible, the supernatural author of the Bible is the Holy Ghost, using over 40 authors, human authors. But then everything is a coherent story that culminates in the resurrection and the power of the resurrection. And so when you read the stories, Pay attention to the facts. It's as simple as it is. And then when you read the poetry, as you read the poetry, pay attention to the feelings. Because the poetry is fraught with a lot of images, a lot of metaphors, a lot of comparisons. And so pay attention to the feelings. What feelings are this poetry evoking? And most times the feelings are associated to the facts of the stories. And when you put that together, you are already getting a better image, a clearer understanding. I want you to let that sit with you for a moment. So, the three genre of literatures in the Bible are stories, the poetry, and then the logical discourse or prose. So when you look at the narratives or the stories, you pay attention to the facts. When you look at the poetry, you pay attention to the feelings and now to the logical discourse. When you are reading the logical discourse or the prose, especially found in the epistles, you pay attention to the connections. So for stories, you pay attention to the facts. Just pay attention to the facts. How old was Abraham? Why did he say Isaac was the only son? But then there is Ishmael. Just keep paying attention to the facts. They will invite you to the place of meditation and questions and puzzles. And then pay attention to the feelings. And then when you come to the, the, the logical discourse, you pay attention to the connections. Oh, why did he say this? Okay, he said this. He's connecting it to this this fact, this feeling, this poetry, you pay attention to the connections. You follow the connections. That's what you do with the logical discourse. And when you start off, don't assume you will have some depth. No. Allow time pass. From the beginning, it was not so. Just allow time pass. The only thing that starts from the top, as my mentor would tell me, is the grave. So allow time. Don't be in a hurry to, to, to show that you have knowledge or you have depth. Just read. Read again and again. Read and see the facts. Read and see the feelings. Read and see the connections. And over time, your meditation will become deeper and richer deeper and richer. I've not even said anything about going to the original language. I've not said anything about the concordance. But with this, you already have a basic approach to proper Bible reading and proper Bible interpretation. The rest will set in order later. But for now, the stories, the feelings, and then the logical discourse. 
And so a story of Abraham and Isaac and Ishmael. And then in Genesis 22, God said to him, Take your son, your only son, Isaac. Uh, but I just saw that he has another son, Ishmael. Your son, your only son. And then Isaac is not even the firstborn. Isaac is the second child. So what exactly is going on here? And then you see that in the fact. And then you go to the poetry and you read stuff like, what is man that you are mindful of him? What is the son of man that you visit him? You've made him a little lower than the angel, but angels, but you've crowned him with glory and honor. You've put all things under his feet. Okay. There's a feeling that comes with that. A feeling of an unfair choice. A feeling of choosing the weaker, the lower, above the stronger, the greater, the bigger. Okay. Does that look like what God did with Isaac? Like God had an unfair choice, choosing Isaac and saying he's the only son. Does it look like that? And fast forward to the epistles. And then you see conversations like adoption. We've been adopted. Okay. So it talks about the choice, unfair choice. God takes the lesser and he makes him the greater. It's, it's a line that you just trace. But your ability to see this and understand it stems from first paying attention to the facts over time you will see the feelings in the poetry and then by the time you come to the logical discourse you will make the connections i can give more and more and more examples but then see you in the next one thank you for joining us on this episode we'd love to get your questions at writing.pg at gmail.com you can share this on your social media platforms and we will see you in the next episode.